Welcome back to the channel. Last week I uploaded a video called MSI Afterburner, how to install it, how to use it. I did a quick overview of how the application actually works, but what I received was a lot of comments on how to actually get the on-screen display enabled. I didn't realize that that feature wasn't enabled automatically. So what I'm gonna do is walk you through the steps right now on how to enable it and how to customize exactly what you want and where you want it on the screen. So we'll take a look at that. So right off the bat, what we want to do is go to our start menu, look for MSI Afterburner and launch it. And then we're also going to run the Reva Tuner. So you can type in Reva Tuner inside your search, click on it, and it's going to run. And let's just double check that they're both running and they're in the tray. You can minimize them if they're open full screen and just minimize them so they're in the system tray in the bottom right hand corner. If you haven't already installed it, there's a link in the description to below for this video on how to install it and get it up and running on your PC. So now that they're both up and running, what we can do is just launch game. And what I'll do is I'll open up Battle.net and I'm gonna start up Warzone. And what's gonna happen is when this game launches in the top left-hand corner, if it's enabled, it's automatically gonna be on. If it's not, what we're gonna do is I'll just bring in Reva Tuner here, and then we can take a look at the settings. So the settings that we wanna make sure is show on-screen display, which is the very top up here, and make sure that's turned on. And then we have a few other customized options here, but this is the most important one. You can also adjust the text of the rendering of the text. Uh, you can have a 3D vector or a rasterize. The vector text actually sort of has like a, a pixel look to it. It's kind of cool. So down below, we have the option to drop shadow on it. So it gives it a bit of an outline. So that's clear text and we turn it on, it outlines the text. Display field basically casts the shadow around the text. So over here, you can see there's nothing behind it. Harder to see the text, but when we turn on the fill, it fills this area up with a little bit of a tint and the text stands out a little bit more, so it's better. And then we have the zoom option, so we can drag and drop this a little bit bigger and smaller. You can make it massively bigger and take up <laughs> the entire screen if you want, or you can just minimize it to the size that you want. Uh, pretty helpful. Depending on your screen size, you may wanna scale that as needed. So that's basically how to enable the service. Now, if you wanna customize what you have going on here, what we wanna do is open up the MSI Afterburner and then we can select the categories that we want. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna minimize it and I'm gonna open up MSI Afterburner. And what I can do is go into the settings icon. So we go up into monitoring. By default, all these options are off. So let me just turn them all off right now. Hit apply and everything's gonna disappear. So now everything's gone. And this is the way it <laughs> starts up when you first install it. And uh, I'm so used to having things on, I didn't realize that when I was playing, when I recorded the last video. So here we go. So what we can do now is we can actually just take a few of them and turn on the on-screen display and you select just the options that you want. So the check mark means it's enabled. And what you do is select it and then we select below, show on-screen display. And that means it's gonna pop up in the left-hand corner when you're in a game. And it doesn't turn on all the time, it's only when you're running a game does this heads-up display come on. So we'll just turn on some other things here like the CPU usage. Hit apply, and then it's gonna pop up there. So everything that we've enabled is automatically here. So if you wanna disable the graph and you just want text, you can have the option here to switch it. So right now the graph is there. And if we select text only, the graph is gonna disappear and the GPU temperature is the only thing that's gonna show up. So there we go, it's gone and there, just the GPU temperature. So you can modify that, you can turn graphs on and off, whatever you like, it's just based on customization. Um, and now in here, what we can do is change the text. So I'm just gonna drag it over so you can see what I'm talking about. GPU is green, the CPU cores are all blue and then we have the frame rate, which is kind of like a pinkish color. Uh, what you can do is you can change the components. So when I change this to kind of like a light blue or a baby blue, hit OK. And then I'm going to change these, the CPU component, which is blue, and I'm going to change it to green. Now it's going to change all the CPUs because it's all the same component. And then the lastly, I'll change the frame rate uh, to yellow. And then when you hit apply, it automatically changes and then you can see it up there. And now system color, that's the system color over here. You can select it. And what you can do is I'll just select a, a red here and then hit okay. And it's gonna change all the system colors to red. There we go. 
And then the last one, which right now is color number four, that's gonna be the designated one here for a frame rate. And we can change that by double clicking on it and picking whatever color, I'll just do a blue again, hit apply, and then you can see the changes. So every time you hit apply, you're actively checking your changes. And when you click on okay, you're accepting the changes. Now you can go through this list and get very granular. We have some preset options here, classic, hit apply, that's classic mode right there. Then we have this, and we can change it over. That's what we selected as modern. And then we have modern mono. And yeah, this is some preloaded display options that you have. And then I'll just click it back to modern. Modern, this is basically what we're selecting and changing our customized ones. And then if you don't like anything, you just hit the reset button and it changes it back all to default. Now there's a lot of customization options in here. You can select various different components of what you want each color of each segment to be. You can also change the text, you can change the font, um, and you can subscript everything else. It, uh, it's very granular in how far you wanna go. Um, if you get really nerdy, you can change each individual component in here. Uh, and it, it, this might be a little bit too much for most users. So let me just reset it, hit okay, apply and okay. Now it's back to default. And that's basically it. So the on-screen display, when you have both of them running, the Reva Turner, which enables the feature in the game, and then you go into MSI Afterburner and you configure the components that you want, that is how you can configure it and show exactly what you want on it. Now the position of this can also change. So let me open up Reva Tuner here. It does not need to stay in the top left-hand corner where it is. These two numbers here down at the bottom allow you to change the position. Uh, you can type in any number you want in any increment that you want. And by changing this number, you can actually change the position of the display on your screen. So let me just cut on a, I'll put 500 by 500 here. And there you go, it's kind of like in the center. And then I can drop it a bit lower by playing around with the numbers. 700 by 700, there we go. And then I can move it all the way to the left. And then I can move it all the way to the right. And um, I can position it anywhere on the screen. Anyways, you get the idea. You can save these presets for whichever game that you want. You can label them. So you can have a preset for Warzone. You can have a preset for another game. And then when you're ready to join the game, you can load these presets up and then it automatically goes in the right spot. Because each game is different, you might want it to be positioned differently as well. So I hope you found this video useful. I, I try to explain it in a little bit more detail and a little bit more descriptive. If you have questions and I wasn't as clear as I wanted to be, uh, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Once again, I appreciate your support. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.